Hey, what is going on guys? In this video today, we're going to be discussing a bit of an interesting topic, and that's the major problem with all the new next-gen consoles, and especially the PS5. So at the time of making this video, both the next-gen consoles have been out for almost exactly a month at this point. They're still ridiculously hard to get, so I have a feeling that a lot of you guys that want them still don't have them, but there are rumors that they're ramping up production with the holidays right around the corner, so hopefully they become more readily available in the very near future, and everyone who wants one can get one. But now that a lot of people have actually gotten their hands on these new consoles, they're starting to realize that certain aspects of it are, how should I put this, not what they may have expected. I know I'm mainly a Fortnite channel, but these problems aren't specific to just Fortnite. They really affect most games on next gen, and trust me, the info here is really important if you plan on getting a PS5 or Xbox Series X slash S in the near future. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about in this video is a problem that's actually specific to PS5, and for you Fortnite guys, this one could be a big problem that you may not even have considered. I mentioned this briefly in a previous video, but for some reason, Sony made the very curious decision to not allow PS4 controllers to be used on all PS5 games. The only games that you can use a PS4 controller on when playing PS5 are old games that were designed for the PS4. So you may be thinking, well, I'm in the clear, right? Fortnite was made on PS4, so surely it counts as a PS4 game. And sadly, the answer to that question is actually no. Since Fortnite made a whole new build of the game for next gen, it counts as a PS5 game, and therefore you can only use a PS5 controller to play it. Now for a decent amount of players, I'll admit this won't really be a problem. The PS4 and PS5 controllers are almost identical at the end of the day, so if you're someone who's just always used the default controller, you're probably going to be fine. However, if you're one of the many Fortnite players who uses a scuff for really just any type of controller with paddles, you're now in a very sticky situation. At least to my knowledge, and I did a decent amount of research on this, there's really no workaround here whatsoever. You literally cannot play Fortnite, COD, or any new PS5 game with your old PS4 controller with paddles. And as if that wasn't bad enough, there also isn't any top tier PS5 controller out there with paddles yet. Sony still hasn't made their own version like what Microsoft does with the Xbox Elite, and so far Scuff has announced pretty much nothing as well. On their website they have a small section that says, will Scuff make a PS5 controller? And their response to that is, we currently do not have an announcement to share about a new PS5 controller, but be sure to sign up to be informed of product updates above and follow us on Twitter for any new announcements. So that right there is actually like a little concerning. At first I thought, alright that makes sense that they wouldn't have one ready for release day since it probably takes a good amount of time to develop, but it's now been a month and they don't even have an announcement yet. And as if that wasn't bad enough, the PS4 back button attachment doesn't work on PS5, they haven't announced a new one for PS5, and even Strike Pack doesn't have a product for PS5 yet either. So far the only company I can find with a custom PS5 controller with paddles is from a brand called Shark Controllers, and that's with a Q not a K, but I've never really heard of them before so I'm not gonna vouch for them or anything. So that means if you're someone with a PlayStation scuff on your Christmas list, but you also plan on getting the PS5 soon, I'd strongly recommend taking it off. Luckily, this isn't a problem for Xbox though, since you can use Xbox One controllers on any game no matter what, and that's definitely really nice, and I think Sony definitely dropped the ball by not doing the same thing. The next issue that we're going to discuss with next-gen consoles mainly involves the TV slash monitor you play on. So one of the interesting surprises about next-gen consoles is that they use HDMI 2.1. So I'm not really great when it comes to technology stuff like this, so here's an excerpt from an article I found online that explains it way better than I ever could. It says why HDMI 2.1 is a good thing as a whole, but it also hints as to why this could be a slight problem right now. 
both the new Xbox and Sony PS5 use the HDMI 2.1 connection standard. This is the only connection available that supports the higher frame rates and resolution offered on both consoles. The HDMI 2.1 standard was finalized only in 2017, and it's just started showing up on new TVs in the last year and is a huge step forward from HDMI 2.0 that came before. The HDMI 2.0 standard used on most TVs today, as well as the previous generation of Sony and Microsoft consoles, is unfortunately limited to 18 gigabytes per second bandwidth. That's enough for 4K video at up to 60 frames per second, but higher frames require dropping the resolution. HDMI 2.1 on the other hand supports 4K video at up to 120 FPS. Therefore, if you want to get the best capability possible from your Xbox Series X or PS5, you'll want a TV with HDMI 2.1, and that severely limits your buying options. So to summarize that in simple terms, if you use HDMI 2.0, you can either play 4K at 60fps or 1080p at 120fps. However, you can't play 4K at 120fps. Now as of right now for a game like Fortnite, that actually isn't a problem yet. The game is still capped at 60fps, so there's really no need for a TV with HDMI 2.1 because you can get 4K at 60fps with HDMI 2.0. However, for a game like Call of Duty, which does allow 4K at 120fps, you won't be able to get that without an HDMI 2.1 TV slash monitor. And of course, if Fortnite does eventually optimize their game to 120fps, which most people are expecting at some point, that'll be an issue there as well. The bad news is, as of right now, 120Hz 4K HDMI 2.1 TV slash monitors are incredibly rare since the technology is relatively new, and because of that, they're also insanely expensive. Like, the cheapest one you can find is $1,500 to $2,000, and that's like some crazy 60-inch one that would probably be terrible for gaming anyway. Now of course, as is always the case with technology like this, as time goes on those TV slash monitors will definitely get a lot cheaper and a lot more models will be made. But the warning here is that first off, the odds that your current TV slash monitor will be able to get 120 FPS at 4K is incredibly low. And second, if you're planning to upgrade your TV or monitor in the near future, it's probably worth it to hold off a little bit. Because I think the last thing anyone would want is to buy some crazy $500 monitor that gives you 4K at 60 FPS, and then a year later, Fortnite enables 4K at 120 FPS. So now, if you want that, you need to go out and buy a whole new one. I think the much better option is to get one of the cheaper HDMI 2.0 monitors that are more around the $150 to $200 range, and then in the future if you want to upgrade further, you aren't wasting as much money as if you bought a crazy monitor. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. I want to know how many of you guys currently have a next-gen console, so let me know whether you're on next-gen or still on current-gen. I believe I asked this when they first came out, but now that it's been a month, I want to see how much has changed. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.